The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Now Navy Federal will contribute $1,000 as a lender credit towards closing costs on your new home. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit podcast. Glad to be in the studio doing another incredible episode. Marcus, how are you this week, man? But I'm blessed and unstoppable. I've had a great week. It's good. It is. Yeah, it has been a good one. I've been out for the last couple of weeks. I know. But it was good because I lost some weight eating just chicken noodle soup. You so did. I'm, I'm okay with that. That's a hell of a diet going through that. I just it? wish I could do that more often. Because when you walked in, I was like, wow. Hey, you, sometimes you got to do it. You got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. All uh-huh. right. Oh, man. We got a great guest in store for you guys. But before we get into the intro, we've got a Patreon question of the day. If you could have an unlimited supply of one thing for the rest of your life, what is it? It could be sushi, scotch tape, duct tape. I mean, I don't care. Whatever it is, one thing, unlimited supply, rest of your life, you got to go for it. What, well, happiness? I, I guess. Why would you even balk at that? I mean, I like the idea, <laughs> but it's not a thing. <laughs> Most certainly is. I guess it, it's a feeling. I know what you... Well, we're talking about emotions <laughs> and stuff like that. Okay, all right, you're talking about like something tangible? Tangible. God, that's a tough question, man. And if you've got one, Jason, go you jump yeah, in too, man. Yeah, in there, man. Huh? Prosthetics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you kind of need those. Replacement parts, right? <laughs> yes. Ooh. Which is why, man, that's tough. It's a very tough question. John or Hunter, feel free. Good yes. food. A limited, yeah. Unlimited supply of good food. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with that. I was thinking maybe camera parts, lenses or something. Oh, so, God, dude. Get you, I, mean, but, I mean. Unlimited yeah. film. Unlimited food. Every, does Unlimited everything food. good happens like over cruise, food. Just like food. people don't, there's no time to argue when there's good food in front of you because people just eat and have a good time, right? That's true. Food and music. Air conditioning. Unlimited well, now. Air conditioning. That, okay. That's a so, great point. But we're going to have to get <laughs> so, together. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Air conditioning, I agree with that. And maybe hot and cold water to be able to differentiate that and then air conditioning. That's a great one. Absolutely. Good job. I'm going to go with that too, I think. Hunter, you got one? I'd say you got to go with some workout equipment too. Okay. Oh, you're young. <laughs> You're young. Air, con- air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. Trust me on this one, son. Air conditioning. <laughs> that is awesome. Hey, guys. Well, if you want to ask your Patreon questions, you could join us. Patreon.com slash Team Never Quit. We do a lot of stuff in there. Uh, some Q&A, some live hangouts, some bonus content, some exclusive swag and challenge coins. That's all over on our Patreon account. Make sure you guys check that out. We've got a great guest in store for you guys. Jason is a bilateral arm amputee after a horrific ATV accident of March of 2008 when he struck a fallen line live power line, suffering near fatal injuries in the process. Jason, welcome to the show, man. Yeah. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for doing this, my friend. Absolutely. All right. I, I have so many questions I want to ask you because, I mean, it, this is – by the way, they, they look great. Thank you. Yeah, you're, yes. you're welcome. So let's back this up just a little bit, just to get some background on you, man. Like, where, where do you where do you come from? Who are your people? That kind of thing. So I'm from Owensboro, Kentucky, uh, right on western Kentucky, basically. Um, I was raised up on a farm uh, just right outside, probably four or five miles out from the mall. And my grandfather actually uh, farmed 20 – he farms 2,300 acres of corn and soybeans. And I know we'll kind of get into a little bit of the story in a little bit, but uh, – you know, I, I never really talked about my grandfather a whole, whole lot. He passed away a few months before I got hurt. But my grandfather was a single arm amputee. And um, so, you know, my okay. entire life. And he lost his when he was 29. And I was 29. Doing what? Uh, uh, he got his caught in a corn picker. Actually, on the same farm I got hurt on. What about your great granddaddy? What'd he do? I don't know what he did. <laughs> Look it up. We got, I mean, because I, that, that's okay. Keep going. <laughs> and he lost his at 29 and kept, what was his prosthetic like uh it was the old time you know body powered hooks yeah it's been sure. around since civil war days and um you know i wear them as well i mean they're still functional i think that um prosthetics are like a tool you know you can't just live with one kind uh you got to have multiple sets especially as busy and you know what i do is uh the body powered stuff man it helps a lot too you know i mean because that thing's been around for a while what do you call it uh, it's body powered, so it basically works off a cable. So being a bilateral or single arm, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you move 
your opposite shoulder from your amputation, you're basically pulling a cable. So like for me on my right arm, when I move my right shoulder, the hook would open I, and then there's rubber bands. Is that, is that right? That's how, like, that's how y'all do that. Yeah. So it's an opposite thing. Yes. How long? All right. Well, we'll just back this sucker up. Cause I, I want to <laughs> hear that's a, I didn't know that. And is it, is it like that for everyone? Yes. Yep. What, why do they so do they, it like that? Well, they basically got a cable around your other shoulder on your good arm, right? Or the arm that you still have, say, if you have one arm. Uh, there's a there's a strap that goes around your shoulder. So when you move your shoulder back, there's a cable that goes around the back of your back, and it goes all the way down to the cable, and you're just pulling a rubber. There's rubber bands that keep the hook closed. So whenever you pull it, you couldn't do it with the other side. You'd have to be stretched straight out with one arm. So then everything you'd have to do would be out here and not, like, at your face, say. Which is a huge thing when you're trying to eat and everything, right? Absolutely. All right, so let's back this up. How old were you when, and wh where'd this go down at? So March 1st, 2008, I was uh, 29 years old. and Doing uh, what? Well, you no, know, my grand, well, not my grandfather. My dad owned a construction company. So I was a, a plumber pipe fitter in the union. This is my wife, and, Melanie, by uh, the way. Hey, how are you? So we, um, I was in the construction field with my dad and um, we was working like seven twelves and I just, that was probably one of the first days I was off work for several months. And, uh, you know, I told you I got three kids, but at the time of my accident, I had two daughters. Uh, Billy Grace was my oldest. She was um, 21 months old. And uh, at the time, Campbell, my other daughter, she was uh, three months old. I had just moved back to my mom and dad's house with my wife. I made my mom and dad move out because, you know, where I grew up, uh, you know, I told you that 2,300 acres of corn and soybeans. Yeah. There was my house where I grew up, and then right next door was my uncle's, where I had a cousin that was my age. Right next door to him was my grandfather's house, and right next door to him was my other uncle with a cousin my age. And then there was a couple other boys in the neighborhood. So when we were little boys, we grew up like brothers, and I always told them that when we got old enough to raise our own family, that we was all going to be back in the same spot. So yeah. basically, I got my mom and dad's house, and... All my cousins, they're all living in the same spot, and we're just raising our kids the way that. Uh, well, it takes a village to raise a child, right? Absolutely. It I, does. I mean, that's a thing out here in the country too. It's it's great having your cousins live down the road and go to school yeah. with them. Yep, we're we're big on that too, man. All right, so twenty nine years old, you're out yep. doing, you're out riding, right? Yeah. So um, I was doing some honeydew projects around the house, those, and those um, get you, man. Those my those wife is a graphic design major. <laughs> And she had her brother and uh, now our sister-in-law had came over. She was going to do their wedding invitation. So um, my sister-in-law now, she had brought her brother and two little friends over. I think they were probably like 10, 11 years old at the time. And uh, Jenny asked me, my wife said, why don't you go outside and play with the kids? And I love kids. So, you know, I, I went outside and was playing basketball, just doing doing whatever they wanted to do. And they finally asked me if I'd go on a four-wheeler ride or take them on a four-wheeler ride. And I said, yeah, I'll take you. So um, at my house, there's a gravel lane that makes a U-turn. It's just a gravel that goes to the back of the farm. Um, so you leave my house, and it goes straight down, turns to the left, makes another sharp left, and ends up in my, my grandfather's backyard. And uh, I told my wife, I said, well, I'm just going to take them around the farm real quick. And that second left-hand corner, there's a culvert on each side. And, you know, I've been around this farm my entire life, so I'm really not paying a whole lot of attention, um, not going very fast. Got one kid straddled behind me and one on each fender. Um, got to that corner, and uh, I looked up, and I noticed there was a line. I really didn't even notice what it was at the time and kind of slid into it a little bit, and uh, it hit the front rack of my four-wheeler, and it bounced onto, hit me in the chest and landed between my handlebars <coughs> and my body but it didn't do anything to me. And, um, and at that moment I looked and I, you know, obviously I didn't notice it was a, a down power line. And I looked to my right and the, the line goes to a field pump when March, there's no crops out. So I thought, well, maybe somebody's got the power shut off. Um, also been told that if you're on rubber tires, you have nothing to worry about. So I told the kids not to touch me and I told them not to get off the four wheeler. So I thought for a minute, I decided, to pick the line up and back off of it because at that moment I had no other choice. And um, I picked it up high enough to, to back off. Um, I backed up, still didn't do anything. 
uh, went to my cousin's house and I told him, I said, man, there's a down power line down here. And there's a lot of other smaller kids in the neighborhood. They all ride around the farm. And I said, you know, I'm really worried that a kid's going to go around here wide open and, and get decapitated. You know, at that time I wasn't even worried about electricity. And, uh, he said, well, let's go look and see where it's at. So we rode back, you know, down to the farm or to that spot. And I was probably five or 10 feet from it at that moment. And I told my cousin, I turned around, looked at him and I said, man, I wish that power line was just this high. And I kind of threw my arm up in there to show him how high I thought it, I wish it was. And, um, that's whenever I felt the vibration going through my body. And, you know, when you get electrocuted, I actually took 7,200 volts of electricity and, uh, the electric chair is only 6,900 volts, which yeah, I, know I was, I was like, well, different. well done, man. Oh well done. That's like a gigawatt, right? Send you back in the time. <laughs> we have a friend yes, it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 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 okay. Back up. Did, did you hit the line? Yeah. How, did your hand hit what, it? Are you barefooted? What, how'd that, how, what, what went down? How'd that, how'd that go down? And how far off the, the how, 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 what's that? You talking about the first time? So the guide wire broke on a telephone pole. So the pole was leaning. Yeah. So the line was swooping. It was about 30 inches off the ground. Oh, roger that. Okay, check. All right. So yep. you just picked it up to hold it up to show him how high you wish it was. Oh, I didn't. Okay, I didn't understand yeah, that part. You no, grabbed the I, line I even, and picked it up? I didn't even touch it. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't even touch it. Yeah, electricity can jump. Well, so yeah, sure I think can. electricity could jump like, I don't know, I've been told different stuff, but like 10 feet, you know. Oh, no, um, it can go further than that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Depends yeah. on how hot so, it is, right? Yeah. So, so at the time, at the you time when I got left, you put your hands up, right? I was not touching anything at that at that moment. As far as I know, obviously, you I have shoes a on? lot of it. What'd you say? Did you have shoes on? Yes. I'm Blue not asking just because of Kentucky either. I know you guys got shoes. On. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Come on. That's messed up, man. It's messed up. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. That was funny. Come on. That was funny. <laughs> Shit. That's All right. crazy. Yeah. No. No. Um. So you weren't even touching it when you felt the... Did the you see the arc go over? I did not. Nope. My cousin said that it looked like 4th of July was coming off. All right, yeah, body. explain what happens. I want, I want to hear that that part. So so when you get electrocuted, it, it burns you from the inside out, and it'll electrocute you for 30 seconds until the breaker shuts off. So the breaker kicked. On, on the power line it, itself? I'm sorry. So what, yeah. who, what breaker inside of you or inside the power oh, line? No, 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 on the, on the power line. Like the main, the main breaker. All right, like so we've invented something that can, can actually do that. They can, mm -hmm. if, if it feels it getting, it, what, what if electricity is coming out of the line, it just, it notices that. Yeah, I mean, if there's a tree or a storm or anything in line, a line gets something on it, then yeah, it'd kick off after thirty seconds. And 30. then, Why? I mean, Why it shut my whole neighborhood power. down. Yeah, yeah. Thirty sec. You shut the. Well done. Oh yeah. You took the juice for the whole neighborhood, huh? Well <laughs> <That's> done. <right. laughs> well done. <laughs> I saved them 36. 30, What's 30 going on? You save everybody some money. Make sure you remind everybody of that too back home, brother. <laughs> they owe me. They owe you for sure. So nothing happened to your. Yeah. How'd that happen? How'd your cousin no, not no, get lit up? The kids, the kids were not touching me. So, I mean, all they had to do was touch me to get the same stuff, but they did not get anything. Um, were you closest and, to and, the you know, wire? I, I don't really remember the 30 seconds, but um, it stopped my heart. And when I hit the ground, my heart started up because I hit the ground hard enough for my heart to start up. Oh yeah. So, uh, but I was lucky that my heart stopped. They said that sometimes when you get electrocuted, your heart will go into like a flutter. Yeah. And you know your body, your body knows your heart's working, but it's not working the right way, and then you end up dying. And when mine stopped, my body knew that it had to start back up. So, um, you know, started back up. I woke up, and I remember from that moment on. What, so what did tell me your cousin's perspective yeah, man, like, I you're hear that. falling down what does he see uh he just told me that it looked like fourth of july was coming off of it and he thought i was dead i mean you know my cousin really don't talk about it a whole lot with me you know i don't know if it just you know really bothered him i, I don't know he's never really told me a whole whole lot about um you know really what it looked like but he did tell me that it looked like fourth of july was sparks were flying off of my body Gosh, so really that's good. terrifying. Let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at Athletic Greens. I have been using this product every single day for the last 
two years roughly, specifically because I was struggling with some stomach issues, some gut health issues. And one of the coolest things about this product was that the owner, the founder of this company, actually created the product specifically because he was also experiencing gut health issues. And it was costing him over $100 a day for supplements in order to work on his stomach. And so for me, it was a no brainer whenever I got this product that I wanted to try it out. I wanted to see if it would help make my gut health better. And it certainly has. But even more than that, it works to give you more energy. It optimizes your immune system. And it's certainly a lot easier than taking a thousand vitamins, pills, and other supplements that you can't keep up with. So if you've never heard of this stuff, let me tell you a little bit about it. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens that are gonna help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Seriously, all of the things. And seriously, the thing I love most about it is it really is just one scoop. The fact that I no longer have to keep up with an entire cabinet worth of supplements to try to do different things, whether it's to give me the energy boost that I need or to work on the gut health, I don't have to do that anymore because I know that it's the one product that seriously has all of the things inside and it's extremely affordable. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself and you're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you need to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash TNQ. Again, that is athleticgreens.com dot com slash tnq take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance so obviously they were probably scared to touch you at this point i mean what did they do to res to respond to that i mean how did they get you out of that situation once i hit the ground um you know, I, I think my cousin grabbed me. Actually, I stood up and, and went running to uh, to get cooled off because, you know, we, whenever you get electrocuted, like I said, it burns you from the inside out. So the body feels like it's on fire. And um, I was trying to climb down in a ditch to cool off, and my cousin kept on grabbing me and, and basically pulling me out of the ditch. Um, and then once the ambulance got there, that's really whenever I got, I guess, calm. Um, they loaded me in the ambulance, and... I remember looking at my left thumb. That's where electricity came out. So it blew my oh, left thumb basically off. Oh. Um, yeah, it's so, got to so come I out somewhere, that. right? <sighs> that energy's got to come out somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It blew my tennis shoe. They found one of my tennis shoes 30 feet from where I was. Oh, my gosh. Yep. I hope my whole right arm was third-degree burns. So um, from the inside out, though? it was though? intact. Yeah. What's that? It was from the third degree from the inside out, right? Yeah. The fourth degree is bone. Yes. Did, did you have any bone damage on that? No. But my whole right arm uh, was skin graft. So they yeah. took skin from the top of my knee to the top of my hip on both legs just to cover my right arm. Um, you know, I remember going to Owensboro Hospital, and I remember them telling me that I had to go to a burn unit. So I went to um, Vanderbilt Hospital by helicopter, and they would not give me any kind of medicine because – and I didn't know this at the time. I know a lot more now, but – my kidneys were shutting down, so uh, when oh, it yeah, burns it, from the inside out, it causes right. poisonous toxins in your body. Yeah. And in the helicopter, they cath me, and I remember my urine looked like Dr. Pepper, and that was all the blood and poison going through my yeah. kidneys. Um, so, so by the time I made it to Vanderbilt, it was more of we need to amputate whatever we got to amputate in order to save his life because his kidneys are shutting down. Um, he immediately amputated my uh, my right arm. And that, that came off immediately. And then my left arm, he actually cut it from my elbow all the way to the end of my hand and said that it looked like a shotgun had went off on the inside of my arm. He said that uh, all 10 of my tendons were wrapped up around my wrist. And uh, cause I mean, it was enough electricity that it just pulled all the tendons off and uh, my hands would have never worked anyway. So they amputated immediately. Actually, I remember going into a room that looked like a morgue. And that's one of those rooms that I mean, really, I didn't know if I was alive, dead. I didn't know if it's what you see when you die. Yeah, right. And all oh the stories are like, okay, gosh. all right. It's one of those creepy rooms. Oh, yeah, I've, I've been in one of them, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that room was called Hydro, and they were that's where they take a pressure washer and wash wow. your dead skin off of you. Oh, So, shit. hey, 
Oh, Be- that's the the worst. One of the worst injuries you can get is, is being burnt. Oh my and I, all my buddies have told me that, man. And I, I, so I'm, you know, you draw in that card, bro. You're you're as hard as they come. Oh, seriously. Yeah. From the time you go in there, I mean, really. What well, people say, I went through a lot. I did, man. But there's some of y'all have to go through some stuff that. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Just well done. I mean, for taking it. That's awful. Thanks. What is? What was your wife? What was she going through at that moment? So you know, like when she went to Owensboro uh, Hospital with me, she, um, I kept on telling her, and and that's why I told you about my grandfather. The main reason I said that is because. I remember in the ambulance telling my wife, like, hey, I'm going to lose my left thumb, and that's it. Like, because it was almost gone anyway. And I said, you know, Papa lost his whole arm. And, I mean, he still farmed and picked up hay and and tobacco, whatever. And I said, I'm not going to complain about a thumb. Like, you know, and I I think I had her prepared that that's all it was going to be. And then um, when she went to Nashville, I was in Nashville, Tennessee, where they life lighted me to uh, Vanderbilt. Uh, When she got to Vanderbilt, she still didn't know that I was fighting for my life. I didn't know I was fighting for my life. And, uh, you know, the doctor walks down to her and basically says, hey, I need you to sign release forms to uh, to do amputations and blood transfusion. And right now I know his right's got to go, and I don't know about his left, and I don't know about his legs. And uh, she said, and, and he told her, he said, I don't have time to talk to you right now. you got to sign these or your husband's about to die because, you know, his kidneys are already shutting down and and i still don't even know if i'm gonna save his life now but i don't have time to really go over everything that happens and you know we've always had faith you know so um i just remember her saying you know our kids without a dad or kids with a dad you know no options like sign the papers and and roll on and man I, they put me in a induced coma i was in an induced coma for three days and three days later i wake up and uh you know my dad walks in the room and i've worked with my dad since i was old enough to walk so i've been around my dad every single day and um, i remember asking for him to come in the room and i had no clue um that they amputated they actually had me strapped down to a bed because i had a fracture in my neck and my back as well so they didn't want to move me around a lot so i asked my my dad to come in the room and and he came in and he basically told me he said you know, we've always had faith. And he said, I don't know how we'll get through this, but one way or another we will. And he said uh, they had to amputate, you know, both the arms to uh, save your life. And, and Marcus, you're going to like this, man. My dad was a drill sergeant in the Army, so <laughs> I've always really looked up to him, you know, and, and he's always been uh, a very strong, strong guy. Those and, DIs you know, are the best. Kinda, <laughs> they're, the be- they're the best, man. <laughs> you kind of, uh, you understand if he says it's going to be possible, it's going to be possible. Nope. You know? Nope. That's exactly why they exist. Mm-hmm. There's some of them walking around down here. Those DIs when they just they, when they say something, you be like, "Oh, okay, rock that." Yeah. That's yeah. just no <laughs> wave. All right, cool, man. <laughs> That's so. a great story. Oh my god. I mean, I, way to take that blast. Yeah. Did your dad but you know, get emotional? You know the story I just told you. Really, that's not even my story. You know, I mean, my story is after the fact. After you know what I did and well, that's what we're getting into right now. I mean, that's yeah. the part of the story. You know. Yeah. Well, Hold so, on. Yeah, what, so did your dad in that moment was he emotional? Uh, I don't know if he was right then because I don't think he wanted. I think he wanted to be stronger for me, you know. Because mm-hmm. I'm crying, <laughs> like I've got tears going down my face. I'm like, I could not imagine that moment, like walking in there, not knowing what they did, thinking because your wife told him that it, you lost a thumb. What'd you and think? Then, what went through your head? Uh, yeah. Well, so, and, and that's really where my, my story really starts because I feel like, um, you know, when he told me that, that news, I I don't really know what went through my mind right at that moment, but, you know, I, I knew I had two kids that I still needed to be a dad. And, uh, you know, I remember going the very first time I met my doctor. So his name was Dr. Jeffrey Guy. So Dr. Guy walks in my room and, sits down with me and he said uh, he said Jason you know and that's when he explained to me about the third degree burns and electricity and you know the kidneys and I mean that's when I figured all that stuff out and he told me he said um, now I'm gonna leave this room and I want you to think of one goal that you got in your life and he said that one goal I want to help you reach before you get out of this hospital 
And he said, but you're going to be in the hospital for months. I mean, like, no doubt. You're going to be here for a long time. And he said, so think about it. And uh, he said, one thing I want to help you with. So he stood up to walk out of the room. And this was, I was in a coma three days. This was the fourth day maybe. And and uh, when he walked to the end of the door, I told him, I said, hey, Dr. Guy, I said, I already know what I want. And he said, all right. He's come back down. He sat down next to me. And he said, what do you want? And I said, well, you know, I got two kids, a 21-month-old and a three-month-old little girl at home. And I said, really, I don't know if I'll ever be able to feed myself or dress myself or, or do anything for myself. But I said, I got to be able to hold my kids. I said, that's all I care about. And I said, if I can do that, everything else will be all right. And, um, and he told me, which, you know, obviously that's pretty tough, you know, for him too. And, and anyway, he told me uh, he would make sure that happened. And I think it was the next day or day after uh, my kids came to visit me for the first time. And Dr. Guy walks in the room and he said, hey, uh, your girls are here. I'm going to bring them in the room. And I said, no, you're not. He said, what do you mean? I said, um, I want to go to the waiting room. And he said, dude, you can't. He said, you know, you had feeding tubes. I had uh, tubes hanging out of my arms. I had a catheters, uh, I mean, heart monitors. I mean, you know, I was hooked up to all kinds of stuff. And I told him, I said, look, like, they're going to be scared of me anyway. Like, I want to go to the waiting room. And I, I talked to him uh, into taking everything off. And he told me, he says, I'm going to tell you right now that if you don't start eating, i got to put this feeding tube back in. And I said, that's all right. I said, you know, I'll figure it out. And when he pulled that feeding tube out of my stomach, came hey. out of my nose, I knew that it wasn't going back in. Hey, how about them things? <laughs> yeah, Whoever came up with that sucker, <laughs> I'm telling you what, man, that, that'll get you eating. That's why they do that. I mean, doctors are great, and the nurses, God bless them, man. Those freaking ninjas, boy, they'll put you back yep. together quick. <laughs> God bless them, man. But those, some but of I, those contraptions they put in us when we get jacked up are unbelievable. Absolutely, yeah. All right, go yep. ahead, man. But I went to the waiting room, man. That was the first day I held my kids, and I knew right then that, you know, everything would be all right one way or another. And um, so anyway, whenever I got back from the room, I told Dr. Guy, I said, what's it going to take for me to get out of the hospital? And he goes, Jason, man, it's going to take a while. And um, 12 days after my accident, I was released from the hospital and went home. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's one thing about doctors sometimes, man, they, they – there's no diagnosis for what's inside that shell. Mm -hmm. they, they never yep. can anticipate that part. It's not their fault either. Yep. Straight up on him, though, for saying, how do I, what's the diagnosis? How do I get out of here? It's like a while. That's a diagnosis. For months. Yep. Yeah, he said I months. mean, time is a thing for, for some of the yep. injuries that we got to go through, right? But the hospital sometimes, you, you know, after being in there while you want to get out. It only took you 12 sure. days, cowboy, so I figure... <laughs> All right, guys, time to give a little bit of love to our friends over at Navy Federal Credit Union. They have been supporting this show for well over a year. They help us put out incredible episodes every single week, and we could not do it without them. Super grateful, super appreciative. And if you've been considering getting a new home, Navy Federal Credit Union is the place to go. They are helping their members save when they purchase new homes. They have loan options and resources to make sure you get a great deal. And now Navy Federal will contribute $1,000 as a lender credit towards closing costs on your new home. Members also save on their monthly payments since there is no requirement for private mortgage insurance. Plus, Navy Federal offers low rates and fees so you could save even more. And Navy Federal mortgage experts can help you choose the best option for you, making the home loan process a smooth experience. Check them out. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Our members are the mission insured by NCUA, equal housing lender. Qualifying members with purchase mortgage applications after 9-16-22 may receive up to $1,000 towards actual closing costs applied at closing. Is that with... All right, and, so and first know, of all, if you got so, three so, snappy you know, teas, man, what's that I know feel your son, like? Your son's name's Hunter, right? So you must hunt. Is that yeah. right? I have a hunter, an axe, and my brother's name is, his son's name is Gunner. Yeah. <laughs> That's my son's so, name, Hunter, axe, and gun. Er, yeah, and then we got a gunner as a nephew, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I love to hunt, too. Um, you know, after I got home, I, like I said, I got hurt March 1st. The turkey season come in in April. And I uh, told my buddy, I said, hey, I want to go turkey hunting. I was still going through surgeries, and um called my doctor and i said hey can i go turkey hunting he's like i don't know i guess can you i know right now <laughs> so you're oh yeah so you became the test guy you're, you I became did. the sf dude right it's like hey man i'm gonna go out and road test this see if it works if it doesn't doc put me back together that's right that's, that's right. right all right cool man so, so i had i had a best friend named sam and uh i called sam i said hey let's go turkey hunting and i said i'm just gonna sit with you and watch you you know i just want to be there i just want to i want to see it and uh i went and 
spent the night with my buddy Sam that night, and uh, this is a month after my accident. No prosthetic, still bleeding, still wrapped up. And um, he uh, he said, "Now I'm not going to hunt tomorrow. You are." And I said, "Dude, there's no way. I have no hands." <laughs> and uh, he took the two screws out of the butter shotgun. He put a ratchet strap on it and and ran the screws back to it and strapped it to my shoulder. And he had a tripod from on the front with a radiator hose clamp and a string from trigger to my mouth. Trigger and I redneck, my thought of everything. Like <laughs> Did y'all hear what that man just said? <laughs> I mean, you're 12 days after a freaking amputation. That, there's not, that's still uh, raw. But, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're still I mean, bleeding, right? Still bleeding, right? Still bleeding, right? Yeah. Oh, right. Still. And good on you for going turkey hunting, man, because yeah. that's the one thing, brother. I get, Well, first of all, I get skunked every year on turkey hunting, so I got a negative attitude about it. And sitting my <laughs> ass on the ground. I, my injuries, when I sit down like that, man, not to complain. Any, I'm not complaining in front of you. Freaking turkey hunting. God, so a, did you <laughs> actually shoot the turkey with the... I did. Oh All right, next turkey hunt I go on, gosh. you and I'll go. Yeah. How about that? Come on. All right, I'll, Kentucky, I'll, yeah, I'll take I'll, you. we're doing that. Then. So is Sam <laughs> building guns for amputees now? I mean, right? I think no. Sam's pretty. We, I, you know, yeah, yeah, an exactly. Hey, tell him, man. He is he one of the first I mean, manufacturers out there to get that online. Amputees that love to hunt. So that's right. Oh my god. A lot of my buddies do. They still Are you do. still friends with Sam? I am. I talk to him every day. Yes. I mean, you know, I killed my first deer with him or not my first deer ever, but you know, after my invitation yeah. and, uh, three years ago, I killed the uh, 16th biggest in the state of Kentucky. He was, a uh, one eighty seven. Now you're just major. bragging, dude. Killed him in now archery. You're talking smack, dude. You hear a guy over here? He said archery. <laughs> I know. Now he's talking smack. That's what I'm saying. All right, back up. Show off. Show off. Oh, my God. Look at this guy, man. He's trying to... What's up? I'm serious. Sam needs a business building guns. Sam's make gr uh, great friends. Amputees. You run across anybody named Sam, yeah. man, you're probably going to be... It's going to be a good dude. Or girl, right. whatever. Yeah. Uh, so back it up a little bit, man. When you... Uh, recovery time, when you... That's pretty quick. Two weeks after an an amputation. I mean, I know healing time, it starts, but what's, what's the deal on that? Uh, so, you know, I went home and... As soon as I got home from from the hospital, I actually uh, the very first day I got home, I decided that I've always been a strong-willed person anyway, right? Like I want to do stuff for myself. I don't want somebody doing something for me. And the very first day, so 12 days after an amputation, both both hand amputated, um, my wife went to uh, town to go to the grocery because she didn't expect me to be out of the hospital that quick. And um, my mom sat with me, and I told my mom, I said, "Where's the keys to my truck?" And she said, well, I don't know. They're on the counter. Why? And I said, I just, I just want them. Like, I want to see if I can do something. And uh, so anyway, she said, what do you want me to do with the keys? I said, I don't put them in my mouth. So she put these keys in my mouth and I went out to the, to my truck and uh, it might took me an hour. I don't remember how long it took, but I got inside my truck. I got it started. And, and that was the very first day I drove my truck. I drove around my grandfather's farm 12 days oh my after my gosh. accident. Stubborn. Some people would say strong willed and all that i say that is stubborn Sarah mule <laughs> probably <laughs> mule headed huh? mule, mule headed man <laughs> say i can't do it i say that there, there's those types down here you need them we i have i worked you with my whole one. life you well that could too. that's up for debate i feel that there's strong, strong will strong will strong will yes. i am I'm, i am stubborn headed <laughs> it's a competition look what i have to deal with i know stubborn when i see it cuz i live with it Hi, man. All right. So when did the prosthetics come online? Uh, so, so as soon as I got home, my wife actually did research while I was in the hospital for 12 days. They're great like that, man. Why is it? They're, yep. They're, oh, I'm sorry. Go so, ahead. Oh, she found out about the bionic hands and um, showed them to me. And so anyway, I, you know, I called a prosthetist and asked them about these. These are work at the time. They were called touch bionics. Eye limbs is what they were called. And uh, so anyway, I, I called this prosthetist and I said, hey, you know, we did some research, and I found out about these uh, touch bionic eye limb hands. And uh, he said, well, let me stop you right there. I said, all right, what? He goes, it'll never happen, man. Insurance will say no. There is no way they'll give you those. Those are $100,000 a piece. It's not going to happen. It just won't happen. And I said, well, let's try it. So anyway, he tried, and uh, my insurance, he was right. My insurance denied it. Um, and then I found out, you know, who denied me to uh, – to have prosthetics because they weren't medically necessary, right? That's what you hear. And uh, so anyway, I started writing letters and having a lot of other people writing letters. And, you know, I told you that I was in the UA. I was a, a union plumber pipe fitter. And, uh, you know, the UA is based out of Washington. So I even got a hold of the president of the UA, which, you know, has a lot of, a lot of connections. Yeah, yeah. And, and they started, 
sending out letters to, and I don't know, it might have been a month later, um, my insurance came back, which I wrote them a letter, and I told them that, you know, again, I had a 21-month-old and a three-month-old little girl, and I said, I might not be able to do anything with these hands much, but I'll be able to hold my kids' hands and walk across the street, and that's what I want to do, right? Like, I don't care about nothing else. It's just my kids. And um, they they accepted it, and I literally I became the first person in the world with uh, two bionic hands, and it was nothing because I was special. It was just because my insurance said yes eventually. And, um, you know, once I got fitted for prosthetics, I wanted my goal – was to be the best prosthetic user in the world. Now, granted, I thought my grandfather was the first upper limb amputee in the world, and I thought I was the second, so it wasn't going to be that hard to be the best in the world. <laughs> but that's what I wanted. And, um, man, I worked extremely hard. I mean, every day I went I went outside and tried different stuff. And, and you know, kind of backed up just a little bit, the first trip I ever went to Owensboro uh, as a family with no prosthetics, no arms, was Hobby Lobby. And uh, my oldest, Billy Grace, 21 months old, I was carrying her in my arms. And uh, Jenny and Campbell were like two or three rows over. And I was carrying Billy, and she got to kicking on me. And I set her down, and she ran away from me, like down to the end of the aisle. And I yelled at her. I said, Billy Grace, get back over here. And she said, uh, she turned around, and she just kind of looked at me. And it was almost like a movie. Everything was slow motion. She's running to me. She's got her arms wide open. And. Like, man, she's fixing to jump my arm, give me this big hug. Like, this is what fatherhood's about. This is what life's about, right? And she get right, she got right to me, and she grabbed me by my pants and pulled them down to my ankles. <laughs> and she wouldn't pull them back up. <laughs> Where's she at? <laughs> Bring her on the podcast right now. I need to meet this young lady. We just talked about That's, getting pants. Th- yeah, we, we were just like, it's like one of the embarrass- so most embarrassing funny. things happened to Mel. She's like, well, I got pants. I got pants. Forget. Yeah. I, I, got I had to wobble four rows over to find man. my wife to get them pulled back up. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Just like walking around. That's doing the shuffle. Around. Doing the yeah. shuffle. Uh-huh. Especially since everything went down, right? Because I was like, you're kind of doing the, the lean down, the, yeah, the total, the total thing, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is but so it, but Tell me you went back to the story manager and got the video of that. I, I had to, yeah, I know. I had, to tell y'all, I had to tell y'all that story, but. Going back to, so, you know, I was fitted with the, uh, with the bionic hands and I literally, I went to my garage every single day and I tried to do different stuff, uh, change oil in my lawnmower, to, just whatever. I mean, I was putting stuff together just to do it. And, um, and I told myself that like, well, in Owensboro, a small hometown, I was in the news every other day anyway. Right. So I was getting a lot of publicity and, uh, I got a phone call one night from CNN that watched. Uh, a news channel or our local news and asked if they could run my story on CNN. And I said, yeah, man, that'd be cool. So the next day they, uh, they posted my story on CNN and I started getting amputees all over the world, man, reaching out to me. And, and I told my wife, I was like, you know, I think this is my calling to, to help others. This is what I want to do. And uh, anytime somebody called me, I'd answer and tell them, you know, how prosthetics work, how I got fitted. I mean, the whole story. And, um, you know, I've I've done that for what, uh, let's see, 14 years now. Um, you know, I've been a, I've been an advocate for amputees. Um, I've done a lot of wounded warrior hunts. I've been in Texas to hunt pigs. Uh, last week I was in um, Ohio at a pheasant hunt. It's called Operation Cherry Bin, and I just want, you know, veterans, non-veterans. I want them to know that there's a, there's a way to live, and, um, you know, you just got to have an attitude and. Ninety-five percent of being a successful amputee is attitude, mental. It's yeah. all attitude, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's, it's, it's all freaking attitude. I mean, and coming along with the prosthetics, I remember when we first started, when the guys started getting hit, like when our, all they would start taking those injuries, and the guys would have 30, 40, 80, 100 surgeries to keep a leg, mm-hmm. keep an arm. But the advancements in that stuff now, it doesn't matter. Like, hey, take that sucker, give me something cool. I, yeah. with, with you, are you every time something new, because something new comes out all the time. Yep. has to technology never kind of slows down are they yep. sending you are you the guy they send the new stuff to yep so this this hand i'm wearing right now um this is the fifth generation hand so this hand has been bought out or touch bionics was bought out by a company called oser based out of california uh actually home offices in iceland is where it is wow. uh this is the fifth generation hand so i've been the first uh in the world five times and 
I work with the engineers in Scotland. Um, I end up doing a, uh, it was funny. I did a, uh, Hawaii five Oh episode. Uh, it's called the hook man episode. And, um, oh, I don't worry. We'll be watching that. It, <laughs> so, you know, I was asked, um, all over the world from people, amputees and, par uh, and prosthetists and therapists about amputations and, and what I was wearing. Well, I got a phone call from a lady in Hawaii and it was, um, she was asking me about if I could hold a gun or a coffee cup, and write my name. It's kind of weird. And I was like, yeah. And I asked her, I said, are you an amputee? She was like, no. Are you a therapist? No. Are you a prosthetist? No. What do you do? She was like, I can't tell you, but can you Zoom call me tomorrow? And I was like, sure. So <laughs> I, I can't have, Zoom. why not? <laughs> so I, <laughs> like, this is yeah. So, so I got on Zoom the next day and uh, there was a whole room full of people and they asked me, um, they said, hey, look, we're wanting to redo an episode on Hawaii Five-0. Uh, we made it back in the 70s called the Hookman episode. And we want a guy that's got two bionic hands and you're the only guy in the world that's got them. Uh, and I said, well, hold up, I'm not an actor. And they said, it don't matter, we already got the actors, we just need you to be the, the double. And I said, oh, yeah, that's cool, yeah, we can do that. And they said, you'll just be in Hawaii for two or three days and that's it. And they said, you ever heard of uh, Peter Weller? And I said, no. And they said, well, it's Robocop, Robocop from the man. 80s. Robocop, man, yeah, like, That's was. cool, yeah. <laughs> Marcus like, knows I, that, that's I know exactly who he is. <laughs> you can name <laughs> anybody. Said, that, that's going to be you. And, hey, uh, buddy. Yeah, so I was like, all right, cool. So they flew me to Hawaii, and uh, I was going to be there for two or three days filming this episode. And the very first scene, I was uh, – and I know you've been around TV, so you know, like, the the people – that's behind the camera is amazing how many how, how they make TV. It's yeah. Oh, they don't talk about them enough. Mm -hmm. no. It's unbelievable so what they do. I, I get there and the producer says, you see that guy laying on the ground? I said, yeah. He goes, that's Peter Weller. That's Robocop from the 80s. I said, oh, that's cool. He said, I need you to lay on his back and put your arm underneath his <laughs> armpit. And I'm like, you're going to pull the trigger and you're going to see his face in your arm. And I was like, all right. So I was like, man, they're going to tell me that they're joking something. So I go over there and I start what was, your down a little bit. Well, what was your first words to him? They, they never <laughs> said anything. So I lay down on Peter Weller, so I, I'm spooning him at this time. Hey, Pete, what's laugh. happening? <laughs> it's Jason. Well, I'm laughing, and he looks over at me. He goes, boy, what are you laughing about? And I said, man, I'm from Kentucky, and you're like the first guy I've ever laid on top of, for one. And I said, I don't even know your name yet. So at least like, I'd like to shake your hand before I lay on top of you. And, we became really good friends. That's a true story because really that's a great. That's, that, that's that a going, man. That okay, is, good. Yes, it's true. Because I know he's serious when he's on set. He's, <laughs> he he, he's very serious when he's on set. So <laughs> that, that, when you when you hit when you break some levity like that, that's kind of what I had to do as well. You're like, can yeah. I take you to dinner first? <laughs> yeah, man. You know, <laughs> uh, I crawl so, up on so top of you with a big old hook. Um, it ended up taking uh, two weeks, a little over two weeks, to film that one episode because. It got to the point they wanted me to build a sniper rifle, and they said, can you do that? And I said, I have no idea, and, and I did it. And then it just got more and more and more, and I ended up having a cameo in at the end. Um, CBS was calling every single day and saying, hey, if this kid's not performing, we got to, we got to shut her down. I mean, this episode was a little over $6 million to do. And, uh, so but, you're the $6 million you man. Because yeah. Oser, Touch Bionics, seen me do all this stuff and they said well how'd you do that you know was it all green screen i was like no man i did it they say ain't no way like you can't use prosthetics like that and i said yes you can do you guys know what that sound is that is the best kind of notification that is another sale on shopify the all-in-one commerce platform to start run and grow your business. Team Never Quit's been using Shopify for nearly 10 years. You guys, anytime you place an order for a book, a t-shirt, um, most of the events that we've done in the past, we've used Shopify to power that experience. And it is amazing. It is an extremely intuitive application that anyone on our team can use. It's amazing for Patriot Tour because when we do Patriot Tour, we've got the point of sale system. We actually take out inventory on the road and manage all of that in one place. Shopify seriously makes it simple to sell to anyone, anywhere. Whether you're selling t-shirts or books like us, start selling with Shopify and join the platform, simplifying commerce for millions of businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you'll customize your online store to your brand, you can discover new customers, and you can build the relationships that will keep them coming back. Shopify covers all the sales channels to successfully grow your business. From an in-person point of sale system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, and thanks to their 24 seven support and free on-demand business courses. Shopify 
is there to help you succeed every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify and you can too. And like I said, we started selling our products nearly 10 years ago on Shopify. That is crazy to me that almost 10 years we've been a Shopify customer. So there you go. Take our word for it. If we've been using it that long, you could certainly use it for whatever project you've got coming up. So when you're ready to take your idea to the world, do it with Shopify, the commerce platform powering millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Now it's your turn to try Shopify for free and start selling anywhere. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash TNQ, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash TNQ to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash TNQ. And uh, that opened up the door for me uh, to get new prosthetics and basically be an ambassador for Touch Bionics. That's great. And Oster. That's great. So, so cool. what what now is what are you doing? Are you developing pro or like challenges for yourself to get better with that? You said you wanted to be where it was seamless. Like you didn't even know if you threw a jacket and gloves on, I wouldn't have any idea, right? Uh, they do have a they do have a glove you can wear. It's got fingernails and you know, I think that thing looks body badass though, man. I like this. Yeah, I think it's tough, and, bro. Uh, so so this newest <laughs> hand. So I end up um, this newest hand. I was on Dr. Gupta on CNN. And I was showing them, uh, I introduced the new hand to the U.S., but basically is what I did. And, uh, the hand has an Apple app for it, so I can change grips. And I'm gonna, I'll am i show you real quick how it works. But my hand knows where it is in space at all times, just like a cell phone. So when you hold your cell phone up in there and you turn it sideways, the screen turns because it knows what, yeah. where it is in space. So when I hold my arm parallel to the ground and I hold open, when I hold open and then I move backwards, it'll automatically go into grips. So I can move backwards, forwards, left. You can see that's a pinch grip. Um, I go forwards, backwards, left, or right. goes into different grips. So Apple heard about this, and I ended up doing a Super Bowl commercial. It was on, on, uh, on the Apple commercial. It was on Super Bowl, I don't know, 2014. Uh, so I did that, and then I ended up doing a uh, movie with Matthew McConaughey, uh, Free State of Jones, and oh, yeah. I've done several news channels, and – but you know the coolest thing that has happened to me is um, I've been I've, I've become really good friends with some of these people because I'm a real person. You know what I mean? Like I'm not I don't have to have your autograph. I don't have to. You know I mean they're just like us, right? And um, Peter Weller called me one day I don't know a month before the anniversary of my accident, and he said, "Hey, I want to surround myself with people like you." I said, "All right." He goes, "I want to come to Kentucky." I said, "Come on." So. Um, he got a flight to Nashville, and I picked him up. And uh, I don't know, a couple weeks before I picked him up, my son was born at the time, and and he was old enough to play with like little matchbox cars. And I told my wife, I said, I'm gonna get up in the attic and get some old toys out from the '80s, you know. And I got up in the attic and I opened up his toy box, and the first thing on top was a poster of RoboCop. And yeah, I was it was. Like, Come on, man, this dude is coming <laughs> to my house. You know what I mean? Like unbelievable. And um, that was the only thing I had RoboCop. I was about to say, you, you said you didn't like to get signatures, but tell yeah. me that you got him to sign I, the poster, I got right? I that one Okay, signed. thank you. Yeah. And um, so he came to my house, but right before he came, I said, hey, people in Owensboro has never met an actor. Can I do something cool? He goes, I'll do whatever you want. I said, all right. So I, uh, I got the convention center and uh, had a party, and I called it handing back is what I called it, and uh, charged $10 a person to get in. And the next day, Peter Weller and I was at my house counting this money, and it was $18,000, and I gave $18,000 to seven different local charities, and the second time he came in, it was uh, 21000 and I gave 21000 to all the elementary schools in my hometown for Christmas wish. Yeah, well, bless Aww, you, man. That is so cool. Way to be an overachieving good guy. <laughs> <laughs> who brought this, who brought this dude on here? <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. Uh, oh, yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> It's been an amazing life, you know. I mean, no, that was I gonna, go back, that's what I we want to ask back you. To that day, you know. So that day, it when it's like a lot of those events when you go through them, man. I was kind of mentioning this. It's, it's kind of who you surround yourself when you come out of that. People can tell you that you're done or you're not going to be anything, or if that that person that steps in there at that time is like, "Hey, we're just getting started. This is actually where it's going to get good." Yep. I mean, you the hear, fact that you, you're on you the hear protocol those two list, little feet feet running down the hallway man you, it ain't about you no more oh, I changed, you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah kids change everything i mean it's not it's, it wasn't about me anymore it was i just had to figure out a way to to overcome what i what i was going through because i didn't have time to you know have a poor pity pitiful me or 
I said, man, hell, we got to pony up and go. You know? uh, did that ever hit you at all? What was one of the What's hardest that? times you had to go through? When? Uh, the very first night I was home uh, was probably the hardest day I ever had. And, and the only reason is uh, Billy Grace laid in my lap. And, you know, before that, she would lay in my lap. And that's like she would hold her arm up in there. And she wanted me to count her ribs, right? So I would start down at the bottom and get underneath her armpit and tickle her. And uh, that was the first thing that I couldn't do. And I, and I laid there, and I was like, man, something's so simple I can't even do. And that was probably one of the hardest nights that I had. But the next day, it was like, you know, I just, I, I, you know, you got to figure it out. And, and again, every morning you hear those foot, foot going down the hallway. It's like, you know, it is what it is. Actually, my brother-in-law was really, really good to me, too. He, uh, he bought me a shirt that said, look, my no hands. <laughs> Dude, friends are great. <laughs> friends are great. <laughs> and and then he got me one that says, don't shoot them unarmed. Right. <laughs> That's even better. I'd like to meet that guy as well. That's totally Marcus <laughs> oh, yeah. and his crew. That's we do the same the thing. Kind of stuff that they do. We have a friend that is a, um arm amputee, right arm, I think, and uh, it's above the elbow. And he doesn't have a prosthetic. And his is the best story. Um, They joke around with him all the time the time and sometimes like the girls are like wait you can't say that and the guys are like yeah you can yeah you can <laughs> yeah the first, the first t-shirt i got was hell was full now now you're back <laughs> mm-hmm. that's why i got that tattooed on me the good dude dropped a ride on me he's like wait well done well done <laughs> yeah that's oh that's awesome so i I'm, I'm curious as to so the limitations on, on the prosthetics when when you manipulate those that are you just learning how to manipulate each one of your muscle strands in the opposite side of your shoulder right now? No, no, no. So that's just the body power. So the way this okay. works is basically when I feel like I raise my wrist in the air, there's a muscle right here yeah. that tells it to open. And then when I feel like I lower my wrist, that tells it to close. And then when I co-contract, which feels like I flick my pinky yeah it hits both muscles at the same time puts it in rotate and then I lower my wrist or raise my wrist so you're doing that with your forearm muscles yes yep can and your dexterity is one thing what about your like your um like weight function you work out lift weights like can you do pull-ups uh I I can I don't do it but I can <laughs> I get that bro I don't I, I don't want to do them anymore either I was just curious as if like if you grabbed a hold of something because if you're just like me then I would want that thing to be able to crush 2,000-pound bumper off. I'm talking about like a ranch hand bumper off my truck, right? <laughs> <laughs> if I, I needed to activate that. that but, circuit. I mean, it's, you know, it, it has its limitations, but it's supposed to. That's why you got different tools, you know. You got body power, uh, yeah. myoelectrics, myoelectrics, uh, the, uh, electric. I mean, I can't get them wet, so I don't wear these when I hunt. Um, oh, oh, okay, so back up a second. I didn't, I didn't hear you say that. What, so that thing in water. I get salt water. But like what? Like what? You can't you can't dive with it. No, not no, yet. No, I mean it's got a bunch of electronics in it, so you know it's it's not a hundred percent waterproof at all. He doesn't need to get electrocuted again. Well, I'm telling you, he took me last <laughs> time, man. I'm, I think he's good, dude. I mean, his freaking heart's still pumping. <laughs> it didn't even touch that thing, did well, it? Well, that's just like Chad Fleming. He's got like eight different legs for different well, things. Well, I know. I'm you know I'm jealous because he can yeah. outrun me. I mean, most of these guys are freaking he's prosthetics like can do everything leg, great. Got a running leg. He even looks cool wearing it. I got Dana. He doesn't even. He's got both of his legs above. I mean, right underneath his waist, or no? His waist, yeah. Yeah, right about right about the quad. I didn't even know he had those until he fell in the mud and we were hunting. We're out in the middle of nowhere, man. One leg got stuck in the mud and he fell. And I turned around, kind of giggled at him. I was like, "Get your ass up! What are you doing?" And he fell again. And I really started. He's like, "Well, my leg got stuck in here," and he. Pulled it off, and I was like, "Wait a minute, man! You're missing a leg." I was like, "Hell, bro, I'm missing two, and I didn't even know that." Yeah, yeah but it, I mean, the guys with—he drives like he pulled up in a freaking crew cab dual wheel, like it was nothing. So, do you have to That's travel fun. with your different arms for different purposes? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, tra- I travel a lot with um, with Oster, you know, yeah. and show people how prosthetics work, and and like I said, I'm gonna be in uh, San Antonio. Uh, this coming week, I'm leaving uh, Wednesday to go to San Antonio and show people how they work. And then next week, I think I leave Sunday night. I'll be in Houston. And uh, Houston does a uh, bilateral upper limb amputee workshop. So I think there's going to be like 70 or 80 people that has le- at least lost two upper limbs. Um, they do that every three or four years. 
because there's not very many of us, obviously, in the world. So. Switching gears for a moment. If you are 50 or older, you do not want to miss this. Did you know that Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance provides valuable whole life insurance protection to help cover your final expenses? It's true, and it can help with expenses such as medical bills, burial costs, and unpaid debts. It helps protect your family from the financial burden of your final expenses. If you're between 50 and 80 years old or 50 to 75 in New York, your coverage is guaranteed with this policy regardless of your health history. There are no medical exams to complete or lengthy health questionnaires to fill out. Simply visit GerberLifeFamily.com. And premium don't increase over time. The amount you pay when coverage begins is the same amount you'll pay throughout the duration of your policy. Just answer four easy questions to get your free personalized quote instantly by visiting GerberLifeFamily.com. See website for terms and restrictions. That's GerberLifeFamily.com. So. Yeah, well, how, exa- can you explain, talk on we that? We actually know a lot. So if there's not that many, <laughs> yeah, we no, have that say about us, right? It's very like, hey, strange yeah. how many uh, amputees yeah, yeah. we know. <laughs> some and hard some bitches bro i haven't got it done and we're really good, good friends with like chad we've traveled with a lot when we did patriot tour and we all of us probably carried one of his legs at some point yes because for sure we all had to help right. take carry on bootlegs everywhere yeah. we go yeah. Yeah. Buddies are for. well and, and and what i meant by that i guess that's uh it's a bilateral upper limb yeah. you gotta you have to have lost two arms okay. uh, to go to that conference oh, okay. there's a lot of lower wait wait you guys you got your own mean? clubs already yeah, they do. They even have their They're discriminating. Squad, Look at this guy. They're guys. discriminating. <laughs> Discrimination. Oh my gosh. That, well, I, that's fascinating, bro. Well done, man. Jason, so, I mean, every four years. Go ahead, bro. Oh no, I just you're good. I'm just I'm interested in the book too. I want to know all about the book. Oh, and, you have a book? Yes. So I, I wrote my first book. Uh, it's called "Hand in a Greater Purpose," and you know it took me a long time to write that book. Great title, I by always, the way. Yeah, thank you. You're I, welcome. Well, I always felt like. Um, you know, why is my story more important than somebody else's? Because it's not, you know? And it took me a long time to realize that it's not that I'm writing a book because I feel like my story is more important than theirs. It's to write a book and show them that you can move on with your life. Like, I, I think that's – and I don't want to, you know, I don't do it for the money. I, that's not why I did it either. I mean, I'll probably, to be honest with you, give most of it away like I did whenever I did my handing back stuff, you know? Um, I just literally did it to show people that – you can live life to the fullest no matter what you go through. I love it. Those are the greatest examples to, to, to watch. You forget about that sometimes, especially when you yep. get busted up. And yep. especially when you got kids because you focus yep. on them. But everyone else is watching you. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, think about that. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're handed a, a, a burden like that to carry that out, when you walk into a room somewhere, bro, and you know everyone looks around, man, and whatever problem they got goes away. Yep. Some, some of us are designed for that. It brings yep. levity to all kinds of situations. The minute people think they're having a bad day, God will move your ass to a certain spot just so, yep. you have, so they can see you. M- much less say anything. So, yeah, you got handed, handed a, 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 yeah, yeah. A, a gift. Yep. So is your book available? Like, tell our listeners where they can get it. Yeah, so I got it on my website right now. It's just jasoncoger.com, K-O-G-E-R.com. Uh, and, you know, it'll eventually go on Amazon. But Amazon likes to take a lot of the money. Actually, you actually almost lose money when you go to Amazon. So <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know hey, what? bro, welcome to the club, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to do it on my own. That's what they call it to Amazon. Anything and everything happens in there. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to send you one, too. Yep. Yeah, we would love to have your book. So are you on social media where people can follow what you're doing? Yes, I'm on Instagram, uh, jcoger84. Uh, on Facebook, uh, just Jason Coger Official. Uh, my daughter's even started me a TikTok, which I don't know much about TikTok, but <laughs> they do. I got one anyway. Yeah, don't worry about uh, it. They got figured out. <laughs> so what about San Antonio and Austin? What are the dates on that in case anybody wants to show up out here? Or can they? So, or can, yeah, uh, wait, wait, San, wait, wait, wait. San Antonio is this Wednesday. That's the, what, the 20... Uh, 28th, 29th, 30th, and then uh, Houston is, uh, let's see, October the 4th through the 9th. So, wait, that's not a spectator thing, it's just, or is it? Did, what, what kind of deal is that? Can people go see, or uh, is it just y'all going Yeah, 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 so San Antonio, yes, they can come see, yep. Okay, sure. Uh, 
Houston is uh, it's kind of more of a private, private thing event. unless you're like I said you're losing two two upper limbs. Uh, yeah. There's people that's lost all fours too, but right. Um, yeah, we, yeah. It's we just a, it's them. called a bilateral skills for life, and basically what it is is a bunch of people that lost limbs and teach each other how to live life. You know, yeah, and, man, Travis. Travis Mills. Yeah, he's got all y'all. <laughs> he's got yeah. four of them. You know what I'm talking about? That's like yeah. when, a twi- when, a, when a triplet walks in when there's a twins in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell him to come. Yeah, right? I mean, wait till the big dog walks in. He lives in Maine. <laughs> well, he's a badass. Yeah. Freaking love that dude. Yeah. For sure. Well, that's great, man. Thank, thank you again for doing this and, yeah. and spending time with us and just being a damn inspiration to our guys and the teams, man, that go through that and – to come back online, I mean, it, it, it is possible for people who don't think that. Yep. And it doesn't matter where you come from, what you do. You got farm boys and country boys like us and city boys, but, I mean, we're all in this together. So yep. I mean, thank you for doing and, that, bro. And, you know, I try to tell people, you know, I know I talked a little bit about the the TV stuff I've done, and, and it blows my mind still that an old country boy, pipe fitter, farmer from Kentucky can do big stuff, and it's all it's all because – not not because I tried to do that, because that definitely wasn't what I was trying to do was be on TV by any means. Uh, it just opened up a lot of doors for me to help a lot more amputees. I mean, that's that's really what it did. You know, it just opened up uh, a bigger platform for me to share my story. Well, you're the right guy for it. You're the one that can, I mean, look at that sense of humor of yours. Yeah. If they drop that on somebody else, it couldn't get that done. Yeah. You have that, I mean, that, that you have the ability to do that. And that's, that, that in itself is a, freaking amazing so i i I gotta know just life lesson yeah if you're gonna leave me if you're gonna leave me some wisdom and leave everybody else something to go on yeah nugget um you know i feel like i feel like god does not sentence us to pain and trials i think that he trusts us with it that's a good one and I think that whenever you can trust yourself or, or trust that everything's going to be okay, most of the time it probably will be. That's a good one. So this is how old are you again? <laughs> I'm 42 now. That's my man right there. <laughs> oh, you're still younger than me. That's good stuff. That's a, yeah. yeah, nice. That was good. Yeah, thank you for coming on our show and sharing your story. That was really incredible. Yeah, was, man. I did love to give it a shout-out to uh, one of our Patreons, actually. Andrew Batson is the one who recommended you. Because he found you, because I think you spoke at his company, Ramsey Solutions. I and did. Yeah, so he heard you there. Said he was extremely motivated by your story. Said that a hundred percent you were a never quit. You know, kind of you fit the ethos of kind of who we are and what we're doing. So I'm so glad that we were able to have you on. Yes, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. when I seen it. I was like, man, is this real? Like, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> thank awesome. you. I mean, I, you know, I, I watched your movie a long time ago, and and actually laying in bed the other night after. After you reached out, I told my wife, I said, man, we need to watch that again. Like, it's been a while since I've seen it. And uh, I don't think she – I don't guess she had ever seen it. And uh, she was blown away. Most times she's the kind of girl that goes to bed about halfway through a movie <laughs> and like, yeah, we'll, we'll finish it tomorrow. <laughs> and, man, she stayed up right with me and watched the whole thing. And it was amazing, man. I, I appreciate that. I'll tell you a little secret, man. We don't, we don't put this in there. But first time, it, it was might have been a few weeks ago. I actually – it was on. I sat down and started watching it. Yeah, I must have been asleep. You were. <laughs> it was after a money. It was after a football a football game. I think, man, I was just kind of sitting around and I started watching it. I didn't finish it. I, I did it, but uh, it's been a long time. He's, he's I never, never, I've never really seen it all the way through. Sat down and it's watched it, a, even man. though we were there during the filming, filming of all yeah. of it. But um, and he, we sat in the movie several times, but he would always fall asleep during it, so he wouldn't have to watch yeah. it. Yep. And uh. Yeah, but they crazy days, brother. Yeah, they did a great job. <laughs> um, crazy days. The director did a really good job honoring the fallen. Oh yeah, we watched out for all of yeah. us. He's great, Pete. He's yeah. wonderful, man. All right, brother. God bless you, man. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Yes. yes. Hey, thank you, and um, I'll definitely send you a book. You have to give me a address. I need yeah. to get yours. Yeah, I got too. you, Jason. Yeah, I got you. All right, we're up for a turkey hunt too. Let's do it. All right, man. yeah. I'll, I'll reach out to you about Houston too when I'm in Houston. All right, do it. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah. So. God bless. God bless you, man. Thank you all. Good dude, man.